I've been hot on uh, uh, Facebook's new budget optimization on cam on campaign budget optimization. Uh, okay. I've been really hot on it. I really I see like that it. option. Tell t- tell me about what, about what that actually means because I'm not operating. I, I I promote for ISAC training. I run a lot of the ads, but we're not spending at a scale. I feel like it, that it would be super meaningful. So what is what is that tool exactly? I mean, it's the same thing that you used to do with uh, third party uh, apps and whatever in order to scale your campaigns and. It just allows you to allocate budget differently in your ad sets, right? So you can just set up your ad sets and Facebook will choose which ones are performing. And a lot of people think that's scary. A lot of people that I work with and deal with on a daily basis don't want to put anything into Facebook's hands. But you got to understand they want you to use that stuff. So if it's going to if, if, if it'll perform better, you might as well just use it. Um, they'll give you better traffic. Uh, I've had a fantastic experience using it. I really have. Um, as long as you're setting in rules in there on, on an ad set level to where you're shutting it off, if your CPA is too high and stuff, it's been, it's been fantastic for me. Very cool. Uh, what about some other new features? Are you, are you using dynamic product ads at this point? Any luck with them? Yeah, all the time, man. I love dynamic ads, man, especially for retargeting, retar- right? So now how do you typically break out your visitor retargeting? Uh, on a one day, on a five to 15 day or 15 to 30 day basis. So, so with my business model is different, right? Uh, we run six weeks on and then a week off and then six weeks on. Uh, so I'm constantly retargeting like your typical, like three day, seven day view content, 14 day view content and add to car, 30 day view content, add to car. I'm always doing those. Uh, but when we get towards the end of a giveaway, right? Um, the retargeting gets a lot heavier um, because we got a lot more traffic. We go in weeds and flows. Our business model does. uh, We spike at the end of that giveaway because people have the scarcity of loss, right? Mm. So they're like, "Uh, I better buy if I, if I want to win this truck. Uh, So we, we hit really hard on retargeting in that last week. And then I'll go through. So in that last week, I'll typically, I'll go through and I'll retarget engagement of videos that we've shown people who have looked at our videos, but haven't purchased. And I'll group them into one one group and I'll throw that out as an ad set. And then I'll also do like your three and seven day and one day add to cart um, that are always huge. And then like your three, seven, 14 day view content, 14, 30 day view content, add, add to cart. But then I always actually go through that last week and I'll do our whole customer list because that last week we're, we had a really aggressive offer. And I'll do like our whole customer list with people who haven't purchased within the last week mm-hmm. because they're obviously missing out on a promo that we're doing. And most of we have a re so we have a repeat customer rate of 55%, which is fantastic. It's actually 54.7, right? Okay. Uh, so we put a lot of value. Yeah. Yeah. We put a lot of value in our repeat customers. Uh, most of our, most of our customers are going to buy multiple times. And surprisingly, once they get entered into a giveaway, let's say they purchase the first week because they want to win a truck, they'll enter again towards the end of the week. If they, if we give an additional offer, um, just, just to get a better chance at winning. Right. So we retarget heavily in that what last week, the people who haven't purchased in that last week. You also have, do you ever play with the, the entries lever? Cause you have the cost lever, which you say you don't play with very much, but towards the end of the week, could you offer like an optimized cheap thing potentially that has maybe outsized amount of points or is it always a, like a linear scale to how many uh, entries in the draw you offer with the purchase? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, So we actually, we were always just uh, every $5 you spent got you an entry. um, And we switched over to, not switched over, it's still that, but we have a rewards program now that we've implemented. Uh, We use Smile.io for that. Uh, They're fantastic if you haven't worked with them. Uh, But it basically, what it does is it allows us legally where we couldn't do before, we couldn't offer people double entries if they spent $5. You couldn't do that. Uh, Okay, okay. But points and with a rewards program they they accumulate points for buying stuff right and then what they can do with those points is we allow them to cash those in for extra entries so yes we do Smart. promos with that now um it's something that we had to get the legalities worked out with um it took us a little while to figure that all out but we've got it all rocking and rolling now amazing Okay, so I have a question here that I'm that I only barely grasp myself, and so if if it if it is nonsensical, just say it's nonsensical. But so talk talk about custom events. So 
you've got purchase events, you've got all the different the different events that lead up to purchase, and then you've got these custom events that you can do. The, the, um, the guys had some questions here about when you're running campaigns.